What's the word, y'all? No cuts. Instant trade reaction. The Lakers, the Timberwolves, and the Utah Jazz put off a three-teamer that I'm actually proud of Rob Palenka. We're going to get into that after I tell you about the upcoming live stream I have on twist.tv slash KOT for Q. As we all know, the trade deadline is tomorrow, and tomorrow at 1 Central Time, I will be going live over there so we can instant react to all the trades. It should be a blast. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, 1 o'clock Central Time to maybe 2 o'clock, 2.15, 2.30 as we see these last trades come through. Twist.tv slash KOT for Q. Let's, let's, let's break some, some, um, some streaming records, my own personal ones, because there's some records that we ain't even going to touch. But my own personal streaming records come through and have a lot of fun um let's talk about this trade though because again we knew a little bit about it you know what i'm saying it was rumored a little bit but the the minnesota Timberwolves are holding out because they were listening to other offers for d'angelo russell and then finally the lakers jazz and Timberwolves are finalizing a trade sending d'angelo russell malik beasley and jared vanderbilt to the los angeles lakers russell westbrook and a first round pick in 2027 that we just found out is top four protected to the utah jazz and mike conley in the second round pick to the minnesota Timberwolves. boom it is done now rob palenka i'm not gonna say he was on a hot seat because he's got an extension but like as far as fandom goes a lot of fans was really upset with him and and they should have been the team has been underperforming Kyrie Irving wants out everybody knows that Kyrie and Braun want to link up LeBron passes the all-time lean score shout out to Braun I wanted to make a video about Braun and breaking that um breaking that record yesterday didn't really have time to so I'm just gonna give him his congratulations now from him breaking it to the the presentation by the NBA to the the Nike campaign that happened we are all witnesses something I remember when I was growing up it came back because we are all witnesses of greatness this legendary moment Jay-Z is in the crowd Kareem is there everybody and a grandma that was important was there but but they lose to a, a OKC team that has been better than them this season. And their average age is like seven years old. Like it spoiled the moment, at least a little bit. I mean, it's hard to spoil a moment like the all-time leading score. But you could tell that stuff wasn't right with the LA Lakers. It hasn't been right for the entire the season. The body language from Anthony Davis and this one wasn't great. People were saying that he's dealing with some sickness, but he tried to play through it because he wanted to be there for that moment. And then the body language from Russell Westbrook, he wasn't in the huddles with his teammates. He's arguing with Darvin Ham because Ham because he don't want to get off the floor. Russ knew that knew that this was his last game. As a Laker and he got to witness greatness and and history um, but he's on to his next team and what team would that be I don't know because we all believe that he is going to be bought out so they missed out on Kyrie Irving and, and right before LeBron James is about to break this all-time record he sits down with uh what was it Michael Wilbon and they and Michael Wilbon asked him about you know Kyrie Irving and how much he wanted to play with him and LeBron said I really did want to do it so the Lakers fumbled that and it's probably because Joe Sy said he want to send him to the Lakers. Either way, Palenka had something to do because, as you see, they needed some help. And I'm going to give him his credit because I honestly do believe that that one first-round pick, 2027, top four protected, he made the most out of that. Of course, Russell Westbrook is a salary filler. He made the most out of that. Let's talk about it from the Lakers' perspective. D'Angelo Russell is back. Um, you know, he's older, more mature. Probably won't have the same situation that uh, helped him get out of Los Angeles the first time. And if you look at the last two months of D'Angelo Russell, he's been shooting the heck out of the ball. After a slow start to the season as he was trying to figure out where he, his footing was, I'm actually surprised that he was traded because we saw rumors a few days ago that the Timberwolves were okay with keeping him around because as of recently, the Timberwolves had been good and D'Angelo Russell had been shooting the whatever out of the ball. He was creating for himself. He was creating for others. But ultimately, they decided that Mike Conley was better for their organization. And we'll get to their, their part of it. But D'Angelo Russell has been really solid this season, right? Malik Beasley is one of the highest value three-point shooters in basketball. I mean, he gets any time he touches the ball is going up. And I think he's shooting around league average when it comes to percentage. But the Lakers, a team that has lacked shooting the entire season, Malik Beasley immediately comes in and becomes a three-point threat from them. And Jared Vanderbilt is one of the high-energy, good defensive, grab-a-bunch-of-boards guys. They got three starters in a trade for one first-round pick that is protected. Top four. Top four. But it's still protected. I, I honestly did believe that if they were going to throw out this trade and, and end up with this, it was going to be more than one first-round pick with a protection on it. And if anything, I thought it was going to be completely unprotected. You can have it in 2027, or it's going to cost two. They got out of that with, with just one. And I think it's dope. Now, we can we can have the conversation. This is make the Lakers start off with a playoff team, first of all, because they're not even that. Does this trade help them become a playoff team? I think it does because mostly when I was looking at the Los Angeles Lakers all season long, we mentioned it after the first week where they started off, what was it, 2-10 or whatever the hell it was, where player 3 through 10 in their rotation, it was one of the worst 3 through 10s throughout basketball. And right now they're probably rolling out the balls with a team of like D'Angelo Russell, Probably Austin Reeves still in that lineup. LeBron James, Jared Vanderbilt, and 
and then um, Anthony Davis. And then you have Malik Beasley to come off the bench as a super star, a super fifth starter that could come out there and score in bunches. And then you still have like Thomas Bryant coming off the bench and things like that. So overall, this helps complete their team a little bit more where I believe I'm pretty confident in their ability to make the playoffs now. Now, the next conversation is, is this trade good enough to, to, to make LeBron and to feel like they have a chance? Well, I honestly do believe you got LeBron James and Anthony Davis on the court together. You're going to have a chance in a playoff series no matter what because you're going to have two of the top whatever players in the league, especially if they're both playing at their peaks. It, 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 I don't know because the Western Conference – other than the Denver Nuggets smacking everybody in their face right now, the Western Conference is pretty open. And this trade helps their depth and overall helps them as a team. And I do believe D'Angelo Russell is going to come in and he's going to feel pretty good about being back in L.A. I believe that Jerry Vanderbilt, though, he ended up on what? Is this his fourth team already, right? Denver, Minnesota, Utah, and now the Lakers. He's one of those dudes that Lakers fans can immediately fall in love with because he's nothing but energy. He's going to play defense. And he was shooting the corner shot a little bit this season. I think he stopped taking them or fell off a little bit. But he, he could, if he's wide open with the nearest player being 25 feet away, he could potentially make it happen. I don't know if this is it for Rob Plink and them. Um, I'm, I'm refreshing my phone throughout the entirety of it um, just, just to see just to see what else is happening because they still have 2029 and maybe they don't feel confident throwing both of those draft picks out there but it is interesting to see them pull off this deal because it for the for most of the season they were sticking to the guns of not trying to do anything that would hinder them from using cap space this next coming off season and that is completely died with the Rui Hachimura trade because they're gonna have to pay him and a few of these people are an expiring contract this D'Angelo Russell is an expiring contract this season where they want to bring him back I guess it depends on how well he performs he's only 26 years old and I'm looking at his stats 18 points per game six six assists and 40 percent three-point shooter right now Again, he's been really good, and that's after a slow start to the season. So, I, I, again, I'm surprised that Minnesota threw him into this trade considering their package they got back was just a second in Mike Conley, who's steady. But, but okay, Lakers, initial trade grades, pr pretty good. I, I, I'm not going to give it A through, a through F, but it's pretty good. I feel good about this for the Lakers considering there are they are a team that didn't have many out ass assets outside of their 2027 and 2029 that were tradable. I mean, it's one of the reasons why they couldn't land Kyrie Irving because they didn't have concrete players that are really good and really, really valuable to teams across basketball. But the, the uh, Russell Westbrook contract in the 2027 gets them three really good rotational players where they can feel confident running an eight-man in the playoff series, and they can believe that they have a chance in every single one of those series. Now, they have a little bit of catching up to do, but again, the conference is wide open. The difference between them at the 13th seed and the rest of the league to get to the point where they're not a playing team, it's, it's not like it's a million games. You know what I'm saying? A, a little win streak. Now, it's going to take some time to jail because um, adjusting to playing Le with LeBron is a real thing. A lot of people will, will tell you that. But getting up to the spot where they're no longer in the play-in, as of right now, it's four games, and we're not even at the all-star break right now. Of, of course, at first, they got to get into the play-in, and the gap there is two games. And then once you're there, anything is possible. So I wonder if LeBron feels pretty good about that um, because he has more shooters. D'Angelo Russell is a catch and shoot guy. And D'Angelo Russell can create his own three-point shot too. Um, and then Malik Beasley, again, one of the premier get-my-shots-up regardless type dudes. And LeBron loves those type of guys because nobody creates a shot for his teammates better than LeBron James. So shout-out shout out to LeBron. The Minnesota Timberwolves aspect of this is a bit interesting to me. Again, it was rumored that they were they were completely okay with letting D'Angelo Russell stay on the team because he had been pretty solid. Now, as a, as a guy that's backed Mike Conley for the major, great majority of his career, I can admit this ain't been one of his better seasons. The one thing that is better this season opposed to any season of Mike Conley's career is his pure playmaking ability. And, and one thing he has over D'Angelo Russell is that he feels more like a point, a, tr a traditional true point guard. And if there's anything, there's like a silver lining or something to be optimistic about if I'm a Minnesota Timberwolves fan and I'm confused about this trade. Is, is that Mike Conley and Rudy Gobert, even though it took them a season to jail because Mike Conley didn't know how to throw a lob because the entirety of Mike Conley's career as a point guard, it was goddamn Zebo and, and Mark Gasol who never jumped more than three inches off the ground. He didn't know how to throw a lob. He didn't know how to do that. And after that first year of them playing together, they became one of the better pick and roll duos in basketball because he became more, more accustomed to throwing the lob and throwing it to the spot where Rudy Gobert can be effective. So that is the one silver lining that I can kind of understand with Tim Connolly and them are, are, are thinking but objectively objectively just talking about the basketball that's been played on this season D'Angelo Russell has been a better player 
than Mike Conley, but Mike Conley might end up being a better fit alongside Ant or be better fit with, with Rudy Gobert and all those things. And we can't look past the fact that a few weeks ago, D'Angelo Russell was in the media saying, hey, if you're not going to use me the right way, then don't use me at all. If you're not going to be appreciative of my services, like there's a lot of stuff. So maybe that that's one of the reasons why D'Angelo Russell is not safe, even though he was playing good basketball. But but Mike, Mike Conley at this point, again, he can floor general a little bit. It's also an injury risk, as he always has been. It's a bit puzzling. It's a bit puzzling. I gave you that silver lining. I'm not. I'm not in love with it for the for the Minnesota Timberwolves. But it could. Again, it could end up being good because you have the offense that is Anthony Edwards, and he has shown over the last what three months or so after a slow start that he is an All Star caliber player, and he he is damn good. Carl Anthony Towns, I just uh, found out through Twitter that he is on this upcoming road trip, so he will be back soonish, maybe. And having a guy that can set these guys up and set Rudy up could be a plus. Only time will tell. And the Utah Jazz um, have committed to the retool or co completely got rid of the retooling and went more rebuild. And I love it for them, um, mostly because if this is the trait that they got, then this is probably the best they could get. Danny Ainge's a guy that's going to not leave any stone unturned for sure. Um, and they were one of the teams that we knew were interested in trading their pieces. So I am positive that the Lakers were not the only team calling about Mike Conley because it was rumors that the Clippers were interested. Um, they weren't the only t they weren't the only team calling about Malik Beasley. I had heard rumors about a team like the Grizzlies or the Pelicans calling about Malik Beasley. And Jared Vanderbilt was one about the Clippers as well. So there are teams that wanted these pieces. But Danny Ainge decided that out of all of them, that 2027, even though it is top four protected, was the best thing we got. Because, again, the, um, Russell Westbrook, another part of this, um, all-time great, he's going to get bought out. No doubt. He's, he's not he's not suiting enough for the Utah Jazz. So what is his next spot? As I'm, as I'm refreshing my Twitter notifications, I'm seeing him um, in a, a Clippers uniform, according to Chris Hayes. It says that the Clippers have shown interest in him. So there we go. He ain't got to move his family nowhere. He just moved his stuff from one locker room to the other. Um, but I also see a Photoshop here from Eric Pingus. That says that Miami Heat are, are a team too. So uh, Russell West is going to get picked up very, very soon. There's no doubt about that. It's about where he feels like he can, you know, revitalize his career because he's an upcoming free agent and he wants to get to the point where he's making a lot of money and he's not going to settle for a guy that's just going to be a minimum guy here and a minimum guy here, a mid-level guy here. He wants to be more than that. And he showed us that he is still a quality player. He just, for what the Lakers are trying to do, there it, it wasn't perfect. It wasn't perfect. So... I'm happy that this trade happened, though. I thought he was about to go until, like, every trade was going to go right at the buzzer beat the next next uh, 24 hours or so. So let me know what you think. Lake Show, are you excited? Tim Wolves fans, how you feeling? And Utah Jazz fans, I mean, the good thing about it for the Jazz, again, I, I guess I didn't spend much time on the Jazz, is that it opens up more opportunities. I mean, they threw Walker Kessler into the starting line. He's been amazing. Uh, Kelly Olenek might get traded as well. I guess there's rumors about him too. Um, Ote Abaji, when they started to give him minutes, he looked really, really good. So it opens up more opportunities for some of the younger dudes that were attached to some of the other trades that they pulled off a couple months ago, and that's just a great thing. They already got their all-star in Larry Marketing. Um, I wonder what the heck that the, the guard positions look like now that Mike Conley's not there. Uh, because when they were really good, a part of that was Mike Conley been healthy, and then Mike Conley start to get injured, and they went on the skin. So th they're about to, you know, lose more games than they were earlier in the season. But I think it's for the better. I think it's for the better. Danny Ainge has a plethora. Let me see. I think Wolves just tweeted about it. The Jazz have assembled a massive package of assets, including 15 unprotected or lightly protected first-round picks through 2029, and a young core of, of Larry, Walker, Colin Sexton and Oche Abaji and $60 million plus in cap space. I don't think they're going to be done. I don't. That $60 million of cap space is something I didn't think about. Um, they might bring in some bad con They might accept the bad contract. You might see them in a Duncan Robinson trade because they're going to need bodies on the team. You might see them in a Duncan Robinson trade. We'll take Duncan Robinson's contract. Give us two seconds. We'll, we'll hold on to that for the season. We got $60 million with Utah Jazz. We're not using that to go get James Harden this offseason. So give us bad money, and we're going to get more picks. We're going to get some more seconds. We're going to get another highly protected first-round pick. We're going to do what we got to do. Uh, Danny Ainge is, is working the magic over there. So let me know what you think. W trade, L trade. I'm in that comment section like I always am. Twist.tv slash KOT for Q tomorrow, 1 o'clock Central Time.